Joining us now live outside the venue where Trump will hold his town hall tonight is Trump former campaign senior official Corey Lewandowski. He served as Trump's campaign manager in 2016 and was just brought back into the fold last month. Corey, thanks so much for being here. I've got to ask you first how Trump is doing. Um, is he feeling, I mean, this is a big thing to have not one but two attempts on your life within two months. You know, Elizabeth, I think uh, the president is very grateful for the work of the men of the men and women of the Secret Service. He's grateful for those officers who made the arrest. Uh, look, it's obviously a very scary time. We've had now two incidences in just over 60 days that have put in call and called into question, you know, his security. And that is because of the rhetoric that we're continuing to hear on the left and some members of the mainstream media who continue to say that he's a threat to democracy. So on these two separate occasions, they seem to be lone wolves, maybe not, but we'll find out. They're taking the law into their own hands. These are, you know, individuals who are looking to harm people because of their political beliefs. There is no role for that in our civilized society, and it must come to an immediate end. Yeah, today the Secret Service warned, they met with President Trump and warm, uh, warned him that he would need significant additional security if he wants to continue to golf at his golf clubs. Um, they have for years warned him that it's not safe. I know how much he loves to golf, but is he going to continue doing so even after this attempt on his life? Well, look, the most important job is that we keep our elected leaders and our former leaders and our candidates safe. I think the Secret Service can do that. They have the resources to do it. And we're going to continue to work with them to make sure that the priority is keeping President Trump safe. That being said, Elizabeth, we still don't have the answers to what occurred in Butler, Pennsylvania. Remember, an individual who was attending that rally lost his life. Two others ended up in the hospital from being shot. And then, you know, the would-be assassin was eliminated. The threat was eliminated. But we don't know how this even occurred in the first place. And then on Sunday, I was with the president all week in California. We came back. He went to the golf course on Sunday. And an individual allegedly waited in the bushes or in the, in the brush for up to 12 hours before he took a, a long rifle out, pointed it at the president. And the first news reports were that this wasn't even an attempt at the president. This was two individuals fighting. We know that wasn't the case. So I, I caution the media about making judgments about what we don't know. Let's get to the bottom of this. But the most important thing is let's keep these individuals safe. Yeah, Kamala Harris uh, said she called Trump this afternoon. Can you tell me about that conversation from your end? Well, I can tell you she did call. I can tell you that President Biden called. They both wanted to make sure that the president was safe and were happy that he was safe. Uh, but that being the rhetoric of times, the threat to democracy, the fact that he won't give up power. Uh, that's what is inciting, I believe, some of these individuals to act on their own, to try and commit these acts of violence that we cannot continue to have. So there has to be some accountability from those individuals on the left who continue to, to propagate this, uh, this narrative that Donald Trump is a threat to society, that he's a threat to democracy. And there has to be accountability for some of the media who continues to say the same thing. Well, to be fair, Corey, the president just repeated his claim that Kamala Harris is a threat to democracy uh, this week. Uh, on Sunday. He, he, shouldn't the rhetoric be toned down on both sides? He's called Democrats vermin, fascist, communists, and said they'll destroy the country, posted a picture of Biden bound and gagged in the back of a pickup truck. I mean, shouldn't both sides turn it down? Well, look, we, Elizabeth, I thought we were going to unite the country after the Butler event, right? I thought we were going to do that. And then what did we see? Joe Biden immediately called at his Democrat convention. Uh, for, you know, more chaos, basically. And so when does the country come together? When does Donald Trump get the credit for taking a bullet for his country? Because that's what he did. And it's disgusting to me that we have another attempt on his life, that this is continuing to occur in this great country that we live in. We have to make sure our leaders are safe. And Donald Trump should have the opportunity to espouse his view for this great country for the next four years and not have to worry about his life being taken by an assassin's bullet. I just want to get your reaction to something Kamala Harris said just a couple of hours ago at the NABJ. She criticized former President Trump and Senator Vance for spreading this false story about Haitians eating pets. As she put it, spewing lies that are grounded in tropes that are age old. She says it's got to stop. Your reaction? 
Well, my reaction is Kamala Harris doesn't want to talk about the fact that they've left 10, that they have let 10 million illegals come into this country. Go ask the family of Lake and Riley if they care about people eating cats and dogs in Ohio or if they care that their daughter is no longer with us because of the failed policies of the Biden Harris administration. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.